Hey, welcome back to the second video in this devlog series where I'm building a mobile game from scratch called Soaring Gliders. It's currently Sunday, May 17th and unfortunately I've yet to make good progress on the game. I've been super busy moving home and getting my new workspace set up so that I can live and work there. Now that I've got a table to work on, I'm ready to get back to work and forge ahead on the next milestone. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention that I got myself a new mic after someone commented about the poor audio quality in my previous video. Hopefully you're able to hear the difference because I got myself a Blue Yeti USB mic which is one absolutely dench piece of tech. I love the sound quality from it and I hope you do too. Okay, let's take a look at the Trello board. I'm already anticipating that I won't have much time this week so I'll tackle this smaller task here which is to fix the parallax background effect in the Y direction. So this is what the parallax background looks like at the moment. What you see here is the product of following a YouTube tutorial from Danny and the um, video I've linked below. So you can see here the background stripes look eerily familiar because I've pulled them from his tutorial resources. They're just background uh, placeholder sprites for now um, and I'm hoping to change them in the future uh, along with all the graphics. I'll definitely need a revamp of um, them. So I haven't changed much from the tutorial. Uh, so when you pull the plane around you can see the background doesn't move in the y direction, it only moves in the x direction. I really like the script he um, taught because it basically shifts the background in the x direction without creating unnecessary copies of the background images. So it gives you that infinite background scrolling effect that I need in the game without any major performance costs. This is a script which basically controls the infinite scrolling paradox background effect in the x direction. So essentially the main magic happens with the public float parallax effect variable which you set from 0 to 1. You have applied this script to each layer in the background and what that means is you give different parallax effect values to the uh, layers. So you've got things closer to the front of the background and things behind at a back in the background. So the things in the back would remain static and follow the camera while the things close to the front such as the foliage and the plants and the trees would scroll past as the camera moves which gives you that parallax effect. So things close to the front of the background would have a value of 0 and the things at the back would have a value of 1 and the things in between would have a value between 0 and 1. So um, as you can see I've also stuck everything into a uh, into the late update function whereas Danny suggests putting it into the update function but I found that late update gives gave me the uh, better effect and um, the camera movement was less choppy. The latter half of the late update function allows the background image to be shifted as the image moves outside of the camera's viewport. To get the parallax effect working in the y direction, I'm going to first specialize these variables for the x direction and then basically do a copy for the y direction. It should theoretically, theoretically be quite simple, uh, but you never know. Let's give it a go. After more failures than successes, I eventually got it working, but you can see that it's not really working in these clips, the background is just not scrolling. Uh, eventually I realized my mistakes and it was just poor coding on my part. So let's take a quick look at the code where I can show you um, the small minor differences that I made 
but actually took a while to figure out. <laughs> so here you can see I basically directly copied the um, X and Y values, uh, which is what I described earlier. Um, so essentially do what I'm doing in the X direction, but also for the Y direction, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but the issue is when I um, try the background scrolling, it just doesn't look right. So you can see as I move the plane, it just doesn't allow us to scroll properly. It just doesn't really look right. That might be due to the background images being too short, but it doesn't really have the effect that I want. So what I'm going to do is follow a Bracky's tutorial and see if that helps since I'm hoping it, it might give it or shed some light as to why it's not performing the way I want and it's not scrolling the way I want. So I'm going to follow Bracky's tutorial and then I'll probably call it a day and probably catch up with you guys later on this week to let you know how it panned out. Hey, welcome back. So it's Thursday now and it's been a couple of days since I last uh, worked on the project. I've been super busy, um, especially just building things and doing DIY. Uh, here's a time lapse of uh, some of the work I did which was building my uh, temporary desk or dinner table. So where I left off on Sunday was following Bracky's tutorial. It didn't turn out very well because his tutorial doesn't allow for infinite scrolling effect that Danny's tutorial allows for that you can see here. So eventually I settled down on just keeping what I already have. I think I realized that ultimately the reason why it looks weird is because the images are not very tall so it doesn't look very good in the camera's viewport. So what I'm gonna do today is refactor some of the code that I've already had to make it more readable and then most likely I'm going to extend the images that the tutorial resources already have so that it looks slightly better. So I'm hoping I get that done today so that I can close off this ticket and call it a day. Hey there, so I'm back now after refactoring the code. So essentially what I did was, since I already had the um, distance variable in the x and y direction um, and there were two separate variables I decided to create a new vector3 object which essentially encompasses the two different x and y values. It looks way better for sure. So checking the refactored code makes the parallax background look like it works fine, so I'm very happy with the results and the next step is to edit the images and make them longer um, so it covers more of the camera's viewport. Let's see how that looks and where that takes us. So I'm back and things are looking great. So as you can see, these are the background images. Um, I've extended the length by over five times. So they're five times longer. So when I scroll through, you can see the rectangles showing that they're way bigger. So what that means is when I run the game like so, you can see, well actually this isn't the best way of showing it, um, what I can do is while running it you can see it looks good in the x direction but also when I, if I can grab hold of this guy, nope, well yeah, so you can see that that looks way nicer 
so when I pull this up um, it looks so much better in the screen below I think that's a success don't you think maybe we could make a few changes in the future and the camera is a still a little choppy but I think that um, it looks good for now so you can see the uh, mountain peak is there and it doesn't move so much as much as the the trees in the foreground of the background so i'm pretty pretty pleased with that that looks really good very happy with that before i round off today i'm going to push my work to the github repo which i use the github for desktop application to do and then i'm going to update the trello board So let's move this ticket to improve parallax in the vertical direction from to do this week into in progress because I should have done that. And now we can say it's complete. So pat on the back, that's good. It wasn't very much to do, but um, I think I've been pretty busy. So I've had to set my priorities. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Hopefully next time there'll be more content. I'm thinking of working on this project, which is the um, speedometer, and um, I'm thinking that's going to be a little, a little bit more work. But there's plenty of tutorials online. So if you've got any feedback about my game or this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.